Hello, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I'm going to be scrapbooking these photos in a Project Life or pocket scrapbooking style. And uh, so first I'm just having a look at these photos. They're hot off the printer and I just want to make sure I have them all and remember what it is I'm scrapbooking today, which stories I want to tell. Grabbing a little refreshment from the Shirley Temple that my husband made me before I started scrapbooking. And uh, I don't have a current pocket scrapbooking kit to pull from, so I have this stash of leftover cards. The problem with leftover cards is that these cards have all already been passed over several times by this point, and so they're not my favorite cards, and they're not the easiest cards to work with, and to be honest, I kind of feel like not using cards at all for a while. Uh, I, do, I do have a subscription to a pocket scrapbooking kit. I'm subscribed to the Stories by the Month kit, but I haven't received one for a couple months because they've got some shipping issue that the whole, you know, everybody has shipping issues these days. So while I wait patiently for that, I think I'm going to make my own Project Life kit for today. I'm just going to use scraps from around my room. So I've picked out these pieces of cardstock. I have two pieces of white inexpensive cardstock that I'm just going to use for bases. And I have this six by six paper pad from Fancy Pants. It's the Millie in June collection. I used a lot of this collection in the 12 by 12 format, but I didn't use the, the little six by six paper pad at all. So this is a really great chance to use it. So I picked some 12 by 12 cardstock from my stash. I used to get a lot of cardstock in the kit clubs that I used to belong to and design for. And so I have a whole bunch of cardstock in the, in the 12 by 12 size in my stash that I really never use. So this is a great chance to use it. So I am going to cut this into, uh, first, this is a very light pink piece. It is by Basil. I don't know the name of it. Uh, and I'm going to cut it into four four by sixes and then four three by fours. So I cut it into four inch strips and then I cut it down from there. So again, a four inch strip and another four inch strip. So a 12 by 12 will cut evenly into three four inch strips. And then each of those four inch strips, and I'm cutting two at a time here. I'm doing both the green and the gray because that's what my trimmer can handle. I'll cut them into four by sixes. And then that last remaining four inch strip, I will cut into three by fours. And I will do that also with this paper, which I started, I started by cutting it into uh, six inch strips and then I'll have to cut it this way. Not the most efficient way to cut it, but I got it done. So I'm just double checking that is actually six inches. I'm gonna cut it into threes and then I'm going to, whoops, that's too much. So I'm now gonna cut it into three by fours. This is very, very thin, inexpensive cardstock. So I can cut more pieces at once with this than I can with the better quality basil cardstock that I was using. I'm gonna sort them into their colors just so that I can find them more easily rather than having it all random the way it was. And then I'm going to go through this six by six paper pad. Again, this is the Millie and June collection from Fancy Pants. Thank you to them. They sent this to me a very long time ago, along with all the other things in their collection, in the Millie and June collection. I've long ago used up everything except for this paper pad because that was a really great collection. So I am uh, just kind of taking each paper and they're already six inches. So I just have to cut it down to four inches on one side. And then I have a whole bunch of six by four inch uh, cards that I can use in my pocket pages. Now I keep changing my mind. I keep thinking maybe I need a little more. So I just keep adding and cutting a few more. And that's what I'm doing here. I am hanging on to the scraps because I might need it for a little, you know, mat here or there or whatever, a little strip or something. I also have a bunch of vellum from my scraps and one full sheet as well. And then I also pulled out some stamp sets that I think might go with some of the stories. These are a combination of Studio Calico and Kelly Perky for the most part. And I'm also gonna pull in some Jen Scow and a few other things. So I just grabbed my Project Life templates, which are just pieces of cardstock that I have written using a marker. I have marked out a Becky Higgins design, a page protector format. And I just wanted you to see how I have my area set up. I usually have my photos pushed up under my computer and any things that I might wanna use. You see, I, I've pulled out a couple of 
of punches over there. I have my big shot on the Razcog right beside me and uh, lots of lots of things to kind of have handy and nearby. So I'm looking through, these are my Project Life specific embellishments. So these are almost all from Ellie Edwards kits over the past year or so. And uh, they are chipboard pieces and little word phrases and that sort of thing. I'm basically picking out anything that might have the uh, color scheme that I'm looking for. So pinks and greens and grays and whites and that sort of thing. I'm also hanging on to anything that might be uh, New Year's related because or winter related because I am scrapbooking the past couple of weeks here. So that big giant fibbage photo, I'm, I'm going to use a smaller one. I printed up that one and I also printed up a smaller one. So I'll be using the smaller one. So I'm putting that one aside. Uh, and I don't know, it seems like I have too many photos here. And so I'm going to have to only scrapbook some of these. So I'm starting with the four by six photos because they're easy to place. They have to go on the top or the bottom. And there were just too many. So I put a couple up, up top that I will scrapbook another time. And now with what's left of these small photos, I'm putting some aside for the next two pages or one page, however much it ends up being, and putting others down here. And so I wanted to keep enough for another two pages on the other side, but then I thought, well, maybe I will use, maybe I'll just put one page on the other side. I'm just kind of doing my project life as I go. I'm not really planning it out as far as week by week or month by month. I'm just scrapbooking a bunch of stories every once in a while. So, so I, you know, it doesn't really matter how many photos are left over. I'll make whatever size page I need to make. So now my next step for project life usually involves finding cards that are appropriate for each story and putting them in the places and also thinking about the size of them. But where I'm not using cards, I can just put these, uh, handmade cards like there's no phrases that I have to take into consideration like is this per phrase appropriate for this or how am I going to cover that up if it's not I'm just putting spreading color basically around my page and then I'll put these white pieces in as filler and as you see as I go along I might just sh switch things up as I go which is a-okay so I'm going to start with this very first page which so I am using a project life card here this is the only made like printed not homemade project life card and I'm going to customize it quite a bit so as you see I just tore out the center part I layered the green piece of cardstock over top and then I tore out the center part and it was a little bit too close so I'm just going to trim the same amount off of each side and now I actually kind of like how this looks so I'm go oops I taped the wrong side I wanted the uh I wanted the textured side to be showing so I just have to roll that off with my fingers then I will just oh I had to get my little rolly tool that helps me take the goop off of things it looks like an eraser but it's just like a piece of rubber that just rubs adhesive off of things and so I'm going to do a little bit of outlining just because I needed to give this card a little bit more emphasis. It was so light colored that I wanted to give it something to anchor it. So some black outlining helps. I'm going to pull up the edges here to just emphasize the fact that it is torn paper and I'm going to leave that. I am going to come back and add a little bit more. It's a little, I knew even as I put it up there, it's not quite done, but I had all the ideas I had for now for that one. So I put it up there. Next, I'm going to make this Betty White card that was, I was hoping it could have gone on the page before this, but there just wasn't room. So I'm going to put it on this page. I picked out a nice piece of fancier uh, patterned paper from that same collection. It has gold foil dots on it and I thought Betty deserved to have some fancy paper on her card and I picked out I have this bad news stamp set it's from studio l2e and uh, it just has like swear words and oh crap and those sorts of things and so I picked out the oh hell no uh, because I thought that that was something that a lot of people might have said when they heard the terrible news of Betty White's passing 
So I also have this fantastic stamp from this really cool stamp set from Studio Calico. It's, it's actually from Big Picture Classes and my friend Stephanie gave it to me and I really love those little circular lines. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to layer this three by four gray card. It's gonna be layered along with the, uh, the four by six card, but I'm gonna have it on its side. Right now I'm basically just sampling, like I just wanted to see how that stamp would look if it was stamped out in the gold, and it's just not making enough of an impact, so I'm not gonna use the gold ink for this. Instead, I took out my VersaFine Black Onyx ink and did a terrible job of stamping that there, but that's okay. I had already made some mess ups on that. Uh, so I'll just use the other side here, which is fine. And so I'm going to stamp the Oh Hell No over there using that VersaFine ink and look at how beautiful that looks. And I did double stamp it because there was just, if you looked really closely, there was a few parts where it wasn't inked quite as well. So I think that looks amazing. And now I'm just going to nestle these journaling lines, but I'm going to put them a little bit lower because remember, I have to actually write on that top line. So I needed a bit of space there. So I think that looks really great to just stick in behind the photo like that. And now I'll do a little bit of journaling here. It says, we were all hoping Betty would make it to her 100th birthday, but she did not. And then I need a sad emoji face is what I'm looking for. And I thought I might have one in my little stamps I keep for using for these little tiny things. Uh, but I didn't, but I did have one in my card making supplies. I have this, what is it called? It is called uh, Smiley Faces and it's made by Photoplay. It's just a tiny little set where you can put little faces on cute little things that don't have faces on them yet. And so I, I stamped it in blue ink because blue is a bit of a sad color and it's it looks a little weird there. I think you can tell that it's a little bit of a, a stylized smiley face with a tear. Not a smiley face, it's a sad face with a tear. I almost picked the smiley one by mistake. There's one right below it that's a, a laughing, crying face, but that's not, that's definitely not what I wanted. So I will just layer these like that and then put them right on the card just as they are. I could have rounded the corners. I actually was thinking about rounding the corners. I want to bring some color into this and I like how this washi tape has both the pink or sorry, the, that mint green that is gonna show up elsewhere on the page because of the mint green cardstock I'm using, but it also has red hearts all over it. And that ties in the red, both from the New Year New Story card that's right next door to it, but also in Betty's beautiful jacket there. And now I feel like this just needs a little something else. So uh, this heart, this heart is gonna do it. I'm gonna look in, these are my little special embellishments. They're mostly acrylic pieces and they're my very, very favorite. So I always pull that out first when I'm looking for something special to add to a page. And lo and behold, I found something special, which is this really cute heart. I'm gonna put that right there using Tombow Mono Multi-Adhesive, which is my favorite liquid glue for gluing paper to non-paper items. Now I know that I need to do something else with that card, but I think I'm gonna wait still. So I still don't have any good ideas, so I'll leave it again. Now this is the, the picture that you get when you're waiting to play Fibbage on uh, Jackbox TV. And so uh, this is a game that we play a lot with our family when they come over to visit. And so I wanted to, th we, there was kind of like we were playing and we were we ended up talking more than playing and so the screen was left on this it's like the lobby for where you're where you're getting ready to to start a game and it has this really catchy little da 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 type of song and it was it it was an earworm and we were all kind of laughing about how we're going to have that song in our head forever now 
I'm going to color in game night with alcohol markers. And uh, so I learned as I did this that you really want to go light when you're using alcohol markers in this kind of a situation. I am using, these are Stampin' Blend markers from Stampin' Up. I think it's Melon Mambo that I'm using right now. And what I find, and I think you'll see it when I hold it up close, is that uh, if, if I press too hard, I mean, you don't really press because these are very juicy markers that you really just have to lightly brush on. Uh, and when I used, the, when I colored in the word M, the letter M, I went a little bit too hard. And so uh, there's too much ink there and it did spread out a little bit. It bled out, but that's okay. I tried to use my clear marker just to try to move that back, but it doesn't work in this situation. So I just left it alone. Now also from that same stamp set, that stamp set by the way, is from Studio Calico and In a Creative Bubble. I don't know what it's called, but it's all about board games. So also in that stamp set, there was, it said an evening of fun. So I just stamped that as well. Oh, the thing to remember when you stamp, when I stamped game night is I did not use VersaFine Black Onyx ink because that does not work well with alcohol markers. See, you can see the M isn't that great there. That's okay. Uh, that does not work well with alcohol markers. So I used Memento ink for that. Now I'm going to do a little bit of stamping or something on a card right beside it. And I was thinking about what I might do. And then I realized I have these dies. These are Lawn Fawn dies. They're called selfie frames. And they're a fairly old product from Lawn Fawn, but uh, I've had them for quite a while. And so I'm cutting myself a little cell phone and it's, a, it's not a current cell phone because this I said has been around for a while since back when phones had the little actual buttons on them and it actually embosses a little button. But when I outlined it with my marker, it was unsurprisingly uh, not very good looking because my hand was too shaky when I did it. So I just cut another one with another piece of that gray paper. And this one, I'm not going to try to do that to the button because I just don't trust myself enough to outline that. Now I'm thinking that it would be really nice if I had a piece of white paper that I could just inlay in that as the screen of the phone. So I have to take this die apart because all the little pieces inside of it would, you know, obviously it cuts all those. So I wanted to just cut the inside without all those little pieces. And so there, now I have the white insert. I'm not going to use that white phone, but that gives me a nice little white insert. I thought for a second there about stacking these to make this embellishment look like it has a bit more uh, dimension to it. But then I thought for project life, I really, I don't have to do that. So I'm just going to leave it. So what I'm showing you here is just the detail in this die. Look at those little dots at the top and you can, you can't really see that button very well, but I'm just going to leave it. So I'm going to put this on here for now. I'm going to change my mind about this, but this is what I'm going with for now. And then inside of this, I can do my journaling. And then I thought I would put this family favorite, which is also from that same set of game night stamps. I think the stamp set is called game night. If I'm not mistaken, I should have written the title of it. Most companies put the title on the stamp set, but that one doesn't for some reason. I also have this technology stamp set, so I thought I might be able to take something from there, but not, not this time. So what I'm writing here is uh, playing fibbage with Jen and Adam. The lobby song is a real earworm and gets us every time. Ba -da -da. And that's all that I wrote. <laughs> and I'm going to underline that so it has a nice uh, kind of anchored feeling. There we go. And I will glue that right inside of the cell phone. And I think that looks pretty cool. I am going to, I just left those, uh, those circular lined 
lines for journaling on that block because I was pretty sure I was going to use that again. So I use the same block there to stamp family favorite, put that stamp away now. And I don't want to use that as my background after all, it just looks a little bit too plain. So let's grab a piece of this. I'll cut down this four by six into a three by four. And then I will place the cell phone right there. Jackbox TV is a collection of games that you play both on your TV and on your cell phone. So the TV is kind of like the game board part of the game, but then your cell phone is where you write down your answers or draw your answers or that sort of thing. In this case, you draw you you type out your lies <laughs> on your phone and then the answers pop up on the television. It's a really fun, if you haven't played Jackbox TV, you should look into it. You can play it on the PS4 and probably, probably on lots of different game consoles and stuff, but uh, we play it on our Apple TV. I think most smart smart TVs should be able to do that as well. So again, I'm cutting down another one of those four by six pattern papers from the Millie in June, and I'm going to make it into a three by four card. So I'm going to stamp on white here just because I'm going to cut out the stamp, but I'm stamping a stamp here from the What I Wore stamp kit from the Kelly Perky shop from 2018. That's paper person now. And uh, so I stamped the stamp, it says uh, outfit of the day. And then I'm going to stamp the little hoodie stamp right in the center of that. And I'm gonna stamp the hoodie in pink because she's wearing a light pink hoodie in, this, in the photo. And I just wanted to season it. So that's what I'm doing there, making sure it's dry before I use it and properly seasoned. And look at that, it's so cute. I adore that, it's so cute. And I use Melon Mambo ink again. And that is of course from Stampin' Up! And look at how cute that looks. And of course my Misty allows me to double stamp if I need to, but I didn't end up having to there. I usually try to use my, my Misty. I like the mini Misty, that's the one that I'm using here. I have all three sizes, but I really like the Misty, the mini Misty the best for making videos because it doesn't take up too much space on my desk. So I went over to my my punch Razcog and grabbed three different size circles just in case the one inch wasn't the right size, but it turns out the one inch circle was the perfect size. So now I have a cute little custom embellishment. I'm going to wrap some pink and orange washi tape, pink and red and orange washi tape with these ampersands. I'm pretty sure this washi tape is from Studio Calico. And I don't know exactly where I'm going to put that, uh, that little hoodie embellishment, but it's either gonna go at the top or down here on the bottom. And so I'm going to draw some lines using my hot off the press journaling template. I love this thing. I'm so glad that I rediscovered it. It was in my stash for ages and I just never used it. And I've been using it so much over the past two years. It isn't even funny. Can't decide which look I wanna go for here, but I don't have to decide yet. So I'll just write the journaling for now. It says, uh, Liv loves to wear cozy hoodies and sweatpants most days. It's casual chic for her. And uh, my Sharpie pen is not writing very thick or dark. I think it's running out. So I switched pens there. I did kind of go over and over those letters so that they would be thick enough to be legible. And then I decided to just switch pens. So I'm using my Faber-Castell Pit Pen. I'm using the, I think I'm using the medium point right here. It comes in super fine, fine and medium as well as brush point, which I don't use. So I will put that up there and I did put it on with dimensional adhesive from Stampin' Up! so that it pops up and has a bit of a gray shadow showing underneath. Now I'm going to put some washi tape on the bottom of this and I wanted it in exactly the same place so I lined them up on my grid mat so that I could uh, make it look, basically I want these two cards to look like they're companions to one another since the journaling and the photo go together. So. I put the washi band along the bottom of both of them. It only covers her floor, so it's not covering anything important or anything. 
And then I decided to use this wood veneer arrow to point to indicate that this photo goes with this journaling. And I'm using my Mama Elephant ink here, which I've had for a very, very long time. And it looks like it's in need of re-inking. I don't have re-inkers for this, so I can't re-ink them. So <laughs> I was able to get enough ink to color the wood veneer, but I'm not sure that I'd do very good stamping with that ink pad without a Misty. So I'll have to keep that in mind if I ever use those inks anytime soon. I don't know if you can buy re-inkers re for the Mama Elephant uh, pigment inks. Not sure. Uh, trying to decide where to put this piece of chipboard. This says New Year and it is from the Allie Edwards pocket uh, scrapbooking kit, which is the stories by the month kit. But this is actually from New Year. This is from the January of 2021 collection or kit, I should say. So now on to this card, the last card to be done, I believe. And I'm going to punch off some uh, photo corners. This is a one inch punch and I have marked with marker the center points on all four edges so that I can use this punch in various ways. I use it sometimes to to put little uh, fishtails on my banners and here I'm using it to cut out some photo corners and I'm not cutting right at the one the half inch mark because that would make too small of a corner but I'm just using those marks as guidelines so that I'm making sure that there's the same amount of space on one side as there is on the other side that way I get these nice right angle triangles instead of wonky triangles. I do like some wonky triangles but not for my photo corners. So I'd like to put something with impact on beside this photo of Nixie and uh, Lila's there with her, but it's mostly a photo of Nixie because Lila is out of focus there. And I found this felt heart from an Allie Edwards scrapbooking kit. This is from the hearts kit that uh, came out a year ago today, a year ago this month. Put a little bit of liquid glue in each of those corners and then I just applied those little triangles to the corners so that it looks like a nice crafted uh, photo corner kind of look. Like how that looks quite a bit. I'm going to glue this felt heart in place right here and I'm thinking I'll put some type of a journaling strip down the center of it and I'm not wanting to pull out my typewriter so let's take a look at what Tim Holtz has put together for little strips of journaling. These are the chit chats and I'm just looking for anything that might be okay beside my cats. The one I chose was be in love with your life. The way cats are in love with theirs. They really know how to relax and live it up. <laughs> So there we go. This first page is complete and I am going to do add a little something something to a couple of these, uh, but not quite yet. First, I, I guess before I finish off, I'm going to put this little icon lady beside the family favorites. And then I, I'm, I keep thinking that card up there needs something else. And so maybe I'll put our family like myself and Scott and then the two teenagers but I don't really like that for a couple of different reasons. I really do want to use those little icon people because I adore them, but uh, not in that way. But I do like that little icon lady there. So I'll glue her down using more of that Tombow Mono multi-adhesive. And uh, she looks pretty good there. Now I could ink her, but I think I'm going to leave her plain. I decided that maybe a thing to do with this card is to add some washi tape to each of the ends of it. And I think that that dresses it up a little bit. But tomorrow, when I pick up on this page again, I will do a little something else. And that will be in the next video because it turns out that when you make your cards from scratch, it takes a lot longer to do Project Life. <laughs> So this is about two hours of scrapping here and I only have a half of a spread. So I'm gonna have to pick up and do the rest of it tomorrow. And here's a spoiler alert. This is what the second half of the page looks like. But if you'd like to see all of it come together, please check out my next video, which should be posted 
probably right above this one or right below this one and look you get to see how that one looks with this with the sprinkles but I will be adding the sprinkles and the thread and all those things and scrapbooking the whole second page uh, tomorrow well it's actually today but you know tomorrow according to when I scrapbooked this. So if you'd like to see the process video for all of these other goodies, make sure you check out the next video. Oh, look, I did some mixed media and I had lots and lots of fun with the second page. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thanks for helping me live the dream. If you would like to see more videos by me, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and check out any of these other videos that you might have missed. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.